Hey guys, OCD Mikey here. How are you? Long time no talk to. Well, hey, I'm back. It's been crazy these days, man. I've been so much crap going on. Very soon I'll be back to making more vids for you guys. Now, I want to show you this piece because this is my favorite chassis and um, functional like button, you know, like how you control the thing yet in hi-fi. It's the coolest thing I've, I've, I've come across. This is a cause cause engineering c o s engineering d one um it was limited limited um release made in Taiwan, but I'll tell you this thing is a testament to the difference between Taiwan and China now it may be a little less now today you know with some of the newest stuff, but I mean this came out i think mm, six years ago or something like that and it's absolutely stunning, this chassis, and, and and it sounds very good, too. It was actually my reference for a little while, um, but I, I have surpassed it um, a couple of years ago. But nonetheless, it's still my favorite chassis, and I want to show you guys how cool this thing is because it's just too cool not to share. First of all, it's got freaking nothing in in, in the, on, the, on the face. Okay, this is the remote control little eye that receives the IR, um, so that's necessary. If you can see underneath here, see those are little teeny pinhead LEDs, okay? That is your only readout. I freaking love that. I think it's so cool. Now, if I were doing this, I may have taken that and either made it smaller and put it in the center or put it in the center of the knob or not even done it at all. But you kind of have to have something, otherwise it looks like generic. But off to one side, I guess it works, but I like things... In either in the middle if there's only one in the middle or if there's two they got to be symmetrical you know um i'm just weird like that okay so first thing we notice is the control knob is half in and half out of the chassis that is so cool like you just come across this and just roll it now you should feel the nice weight and the detents on this it's like you can feel the detents you know you can count them if you want um the tolerance shall we look at the tolerance let me see i gotta Get my camera for closer um, focus. There we go. Um, the tolerance on this thing is stunning. I mean, this is wicked tolerance. This is this is Switzerland tolerance. I mean, this is nutso tolerance. We look around. Do we see is it any wider anywhere? I mean, let's see. I'm lean this way, so maybe we get just a barely see it a little bit this way. So maybe we we you know. Maybe it's just off. You could bend it a little bit, but to make it perfect. But um, I mean, but still, it doesn't rub anywhere. It's not rubbing. Um, so that is insanity um, in terms of tolerance. And it's so cool to be able to just roll and fling it. Dit, dit, dit. You know, if you want to up volume, down volume, um, and then it presses in. So you can, you can, and we'll come back and visit it with um, when I got it plugged in, so you can see. But I want to show you this. Okay, now here's the lid. You can see it's this is all milled out of aluminum, okay? So these are aluminum pieces. Now, hang on while I flip this thing around. Now we're looking here and we can see how the corners, how this is this is milled into the rear panel. Like this. So this rear panel at one time was whatever, half an inch thick, and they milled it all the way down to get this little you can see, whoops, let's see this way maybe. You can see how there's just there's there's no there's no line there so that means this is milled out um that is that's amazing nobody does that nobody takes a big fat piece of aluminum and mills it down to make a lid lids are usually an afterthought so this lid is actually this um what is that eighth inch or is that a, that or is that a quarter let's see where's my calipers not as hard for me to tell that i should be i should know that off the top of my head shouldn't i um but where do calipers go calipers yeah see everything's so organized in here that's why i can find my calipers immediately when i need them um anyways you can see how thick that is that is maybe a quarter inch i think that is a quarter inch anyways but check this out so to get this lid off we slide it back okay um, i'm gonna grab with two hands here on the sides uh, Okay, so we slide it back. Okay, so I got it. I just pressed on both sides and pulled it back. Pull it back a little. Now we get it to here where it stops and then we can lift it. Okay, so we get it like this and we lift it. Okay, now 
look at the bottom of this. These are the milled latches. The, they're not normally, man, this would be a, a piece of steel, sheet steel, screwed onto the aluminum with screws in, in there holding this mounting bracket, would be a mounting bracket. These are milled into the side. These are milled out of the lid. These are not going anywhere. There is no, there is no line there, see? Like, there is no, there is no seam. That is milled in. Can you see that? Oops, try and get the focus here. Focus. There we go. I mean... This type of machining is high level machining, so damn precise to get that right. Um, you can even see some of the machine marks in the edges and the little machine marks where they, you know, where they didn't have to make it all smooth, like the edge. And then this is gonna trip you out. So in the front where it fits in, it fits into a tongue and groove. Look at that. That is absolutely nuts. Now we look at the front face of the, of the um, here we are on the front panel, I mean the lid. Look at that. There is a uh, there is that tongue right here. Let's try and get it focused for you. All along there. So there is the tongue on there and it fits precisely into the groove in the front in the front and the front panel is a front cap like. It it goes it it um see let me see if I can back out of here. Um yep, yeah, that way. That way. Okay. So um so the front panel is is a cap it, it goes it's got a, the top and then the face and then the bottom so it's a, it's a full like c thing and you can see there's a seam right there that goes along um here this is the the case this is milled out of the out of the um out of the face panel it's a whole case for that knob to to reside in and then the pcbs that are on the back you know to support it um absolutely crazy um not so uh Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, so, and then here's the inside. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's cool in, in some ways. I'm, I'm really tripping out on the way it looks more so than the inside, but I'll go through the inside with you. It's obviously, um, analog and a digital power supply. So it's got two toroids. It's always a good sign. Um, if you're really highfalutin, you've got three because you've got one for the right, one for the left, one for the, and, and I, one for the digital, and then one for the left analog, one for the right analog. And then we come over here. And we've got, um, it's a chip base, that's a Burr Brown chip. And, uh, and there are two boards, okay, see the one below it and the one, so this is dual mono, so there's one board per channel, one analog board per channel, or one DAC board and analog board, D to A board per channel. So this is pretty wicked. Now these little wires that go out there, you can move them and they and, and 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 moving them changes the signal to noise so they get these perfectly dialed in now they could have done traces over here they tried the flying wires and it sounded better and better signal to noise so they went with flying wires which is crazy nobody does that okay so these guys look they went in they did flying wires off the DAC chip there it shows what it is what is it i don't know pcm 1792 and then it goes over to um some more these look like filter caps on some uh op amps and then our you know that's probably maybe a buffer i'm not sure what that is probably a buffer over to um to the output which is is um differential you can see that means balance because there's this is one side so if there's eight of them for one channel you, you can bet that's differential that so that's that's truly balanced um and then it goes through some relays and so forth and then to the outputs here so you've got balanced outputs and uh, single-ended outputs in the middle is the power supply and the dsp board right here which is on a card sort of a thing so you can remove that you know put it take it in take it out switch for new ones but that's pretty trick it's got what's really cool is this ground uh thing here for the chassis so this allows you to ground the chassis independently which is always nice i end up doing that anyways this is a buffer switch for um you can you can change to on or off you should just always have it on it, this is to allow for latency on the television um because they have two um uh, uh, uh um, toss links in if you care to use this with your television um and then usb 2.0 and 1.0 one is for like windows you can do if you go to 1.0 you can have a windows computer on this thing without drivers if you put it up to 2.0 then you need drivers um, but not with if you've got a Linux um, system. 
Uh, and so that is that. You see some voltage regs over here. Um, the main voltage regs down here. So it's pretty trick. Um, and it's, it's, it's really cool. But mainly the thing that, that trips me out in this is the whole... Um, this whole... Look at that line down there. It's got spikes on the bottom for the feet. You know, and then these these lines are just so cool and so interesting. I like modern art, so so that's why I dig this thing. I'm gonna put it back together, light it up, and show you how the controls work. So hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. Now check out this killer boot sequence. Look at that. I love that shit. That's so cool. Now it's there. Now, you know, I mean, and the coolest thing is everything is totally intuitive, okay? So, of course, that means volume, right? You can, you know that. And then input select. Let's see when it goes back to those. Uh, it's like this. You press it. You got that input, that input, that input. Boom, right down the row to different inputs. And that's all you need is input select and volume. You can hear the relays clicking in there when it goes over to the other inputs, the other digital area. Cool little green light. Yeah, man. So this thing is, is is so cool. I love it. I just thought I'd share it with you. Cause Engineering D1, if you can find one, they're completely soft on the market. Um, they were 10G new. Um, but you can pick them up if you find them for shh, around like 35, 4 thou, something like that. And it's a killer DAC. I love it. Um I'm going to see if the guy will let me keep it. <laughs> he sent it back to have me check it out. You won't believe what it was. It wasn't powering up. I checked the voltage. We got good voltage into the fuse box. We got into the fuse container over there. We got no voltage coming out of it. I look, pull out the fuses, test them. They're both good, but they're making sort of a weak connection. Um, they've got some crappy ass. They're these uh, hi-fi fuses that are the Chinese hi-fi fuses that are not the real ones, but they're like kind of copies you know, um, that they're, and they're cheap. They're little ceramic with little gold ends on them. I take a little t emery paper that I've got and I, and I, and I turn on both, I clean off the ends of the damn, uh, fuses, put them back in and voila, that's it. That's all it was. Thing works perfectly. Um, I'm sure it does. I know these things never had issues. Um, and if they do that, little brr, brr, back and tick and go, and then the click, you hit it and it, the relays click, then we're good to go. So I guess um, that was the easiest repair I've ever done. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so that is it. Cause Engineering D1. They're so cool. You know, look at this. I mean, just, just the angles, the cut of the angles on the bottom. I mean, it is very hard to make something different with a faceplate. You would not believe. I mean, just try it. Try it for, you know, we should have a contest. Just take out your pen, your, your pen and, and, and pencil, whatever, your pad and pencil, and freaking draw me a box of a, of a, of, a, of the face of a, of a of a CD for a or a DAC or something like that. Just try it, man. It's near impossible. Everything's been done. There's nothing cool. That, I mean, it's all been done. It's very very hard. So for them to come out with this, this is a, a hell of a of a, of a um, applause for me, because it is hard to make something unique in in a box in in a stereo box. Something that the, these dimensions for a hi-fi piece, very very hard to make something unique and different. Try yourself. Like I said, it's not as easy as you think. Okay, so that's it. I will see you soon. See you.